Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, hope everybody had a good day uh, trading. Uh, again, like we talked about last night, um, I really like beta coming into today. Um, I thought yesterday's price action started really setting up some pretty good channels for us today. And, you know, we kind of got that move. Um, pretty straightforward day. I, I, I think if you look at how the market is kind of trading the last three, four days, we started talking about this a couple of days ago, the noise level in the tape is definitely lower. Okay, the COVID headlines are lower. Um, the overall market headlines from everything, Republicans, Democrats, uh, China, everything is lower. It, it almost feels like that the market is kind of in, in waiting mode. In, in a weird way, it kind of reminds me of like a July or late August type of market that people are kind of going through motions that are almost like ready for like Labor Day and kind of going back to school. Again, all schools are closed, especially in the tri-state area uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, but that's kind of how we are. And, and like, like my mom used to say all the time, no news is good news. And I think that's where the market bulls are really starting uh, to get very, very um, comfortable. I think that's the best way of saying it. And if you look at today's action, kind of like yesterday, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, you had good pivots. Uh, we talked about Shop yesterday and NVIDIA uh, and Netflix. And I, I was a little bit disappointed in Netflix. It was still a pretty decent pivot. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about uh, today's session was that we had a big gap up. Okay. And it really did take a lot of the value uh, from yesterday's uh, watch list. And again, when you look at how beta trades, and I, go, I, know, I know a lot of people really like, um, you know, a lot of random stocks, you know, the really big sexy names that are up, you know, 200% one day and you never hear from them for another two years. But the, again, the reason why beta is so unique compared to everything else, like perfect example today, Tesla, we traded it to the long side, to the short side, literally in the same candle, in the same interval. And these are the only stocks in the entire market that you can have the luxury of missing a window in one direction and have it confirm in the opposite direction um, to kind of get to kind of get good value. And that's what we got today. And if you look at the headlines today after the close, you're, you're kind of getting the same, you know, you're kind of getting the same format that we've been seeing. So for example, Disney came out with earnings, right? And I, I tweeted this out and I said, look, unless Disney comes out, with some really, really aggressive negative news, everybody knows the market, you know, the market is expecting a horrific quarter. You have 58%, right? 58% um, uh, in revenue, lower revenue in uh, the parks being closed, the cruise ships. And for a while, Disney was just sitting there. It was just sitting there. It was up a dollar, up a dollar fifty, up eighty cents. In the last forty minutes or so, they started selling, selling off. Again, I'm not privy to what's going on in the conference call because I'm recording this video. But unless they're saying something very, very, just really, really crazy, even if the market really sells the stock off tomorrow, it's not going to be one of those sell-offs. It's going to be twenty, twenty-five percent, ten percent. It's going to be kind of what they're saying on the conference call. And if you look at kind of the big number that jumps out at you, you know, $1.4 billion in revenue loss to COVID. And that's kind of a big deal. That might be actually uh, why they're finally selling off the, the, the stock. But if you look at the daily chart, again, can there be a very big macro trade left in Disney, even if it starts building, you know, below this 98, 97 level? Yeah, sure it can. Of course it can. But again, I think before anybody goes into tomorrow's session and say right away, oh, the bears are in full control of Disney, for example, um, you know, again, you have to see how the stock opens up. You have to see how early sellers get uh, treated and see what happens in the next round. The same way, for example, on BYND, right? BYND had this big, big move uh, after the close. They came out with earnings, pretty good earnings, right? Pretty good earnings. They top forecast. They're talking about rapid growth. 
uh, due to the closures of so many restaurants. But again, they did exactly the same thing, the smart thing, what all these other companies are doing. They stopped forward guidance. Again, it's a very, very smart and savvy safety net that Apple actually started uh, about a month ago to make lower expectations going forward. Very, very savvy as well. Uh, Airbnb, again, just to show you how devastating the effect of uh, the COVID-19 virus is, they cut 25% of their force. Workforce, 25% gone. That's a big deal. Again, nobody's traveling. Nobody's renting out homes. This is a big deal. Again, is the economy a reflection of the stock market? Absolutely not. Uh, but again, I think the bigger headline is Match.com, right? They're said in the quarter that Tinder saw a slowdown, all right? Not a stop, but a slowdown, which basically means when you're sitting at home and you don't have companionship, okay, despite getting the COVID-19 virus, you might not be overly aggressive to meet a new person online, but you're still willing to do it. Match up 2% after hours. So I think going into tomorrow's session, it, when I looked at a lot of the charts, you know, you could see some very, very clean takeaways from today. Very, very aggressive move up to start the day. A lot of stocks did what they had to do. Well, to get to the pivots in a second. Uh, again, bears can make a case. Well, there was a double top here uh, off of the 220 areas of uh, the queues. And you can see it right here. 220 is the high here. 220 is the high here. Uh, nice little sell-off into the close. The bulls can turn around and say, yeah, all that did happen. But look what happened as well. Not only did we reclaim the 213 area on the queues that have been over and under now for the last month, we also held the rising five-day moving average. And now we're starting to build a base here. So if you look at the charts tonight, you'll see a lot of names in between, right? You'll see a lot of names uh, that are in between their ranges and something has to give. So tomorrow, is this going to be one of those days that I think there's going to be tremendous value in, in, in the overall market? Probably not, right? Because if you look at names, for example, uh, like in the video, right? In the middle of the range, when you look at Netflix and it had a chance to really, really go today, we had a you know okay trade on it today. Um, it could have been a lot better. Right, but you can see it's right in the middle of the range, still needs to confirm. If you look at Tesla, we had a two sided pivot on this thing one to the upside, one to the downside. It's kind of in the middle of the range. So it would not shock me tomorrow if we are sitting there and waiting for two or three good pivots throughout the day. It wouldn't shock me because, again, you're, you're, you're getting a good sense of what's going to happen tomorrow on the previous night's watch list, the previous night's research. And when stocks are sitting in the middle of the ranges, for example, like Amazon, right? Perfect, you know, perfect example. Amazon is the middle of the range. You know it needs for the bulls, needs to reclaim this level here, and the bears need to reclaim the level here. So it's not here, not there. So a lot of names are going to reflect kind of the closing price action of the queues. Uh, would it shock me if we rallied tomorrow? No, it wouldn't. Would it shock me if we go down tomorrow, start losing the five-day moving average, and get start going below the 213 area? No, again, it, it's, it's kind of the same... Uh, MO. It's kind of the same O that we're talking about every single day. The market means nothing anymore. Okay. The scoreboard is strictly a conversational piece. You're getting a guideline, kind of a little bit of a blueprint, what you think is going to happen tomorrow, but it comes down to, uh, to research. It comes down to technical analysis. And when you go through, especially when you go through the NASDAQ 100 names, you'll see there's a couple of names that are clearly look like they're going to break down tomorrow. Okay. And if you do your research, it's only hundred names. It should take you 10 minutes, five minutes, five 5, 10 minutes to go through the NASDAQ 100 names. There are names that look like they are about to come in. There's a couple of names that look like they're about to rally. But ultimately, again, like I said, going into uh, tomorrow's session, I would not be shocked if we're sitting there and sitting there and playing with our thumbs and playing with our hair because, again, we need things to confirm. Again, I hope I'm wrong, right? I hope I'm wrong. But uh, again, when it comes down to it, it's not how many you trade, it's how many you trade properly. And when you look at uh, today's pivot, some good stuff, some really, really good stuff here. So uh, here's the video from last night. We talked about this. There's a lot of beta names that are setting up really well for tomorrow. That's for today, right? We discussed the technical levels on shop, on Netflix, on Nvidia, on Roku, right? Some, some really, really good setups. The market gapped up today. A lot of names really gapped up a lot. Like for example, last night I liked uh, on, on the watch list for, for today, I liked uh, Roku at 2450. The damn thing gapped up to 28. I liked NVIDIA at 92. It gapped up to 97. 
right? So we, you know, we had to really pick and choose this morning from good value, but some of the names that did play out very well, they played out incredibly well. And that's the name of the game. Again, you're not trying to uh, pick the ones that are giving the biggest move, looking for confirmation. You're looking for the ones who are sitting right on the confirmation levels and need that break of supply or demand, depending which way you're trading, uh, for that second entry to confirm. So let's talk about this. So uh, there was a, a two-sided pivot today on Tesla. Uh, 792, 793 needs to build. Um, I thought if this thing got going, we could have potentially saw 809 area. So I got along this thing on the second entry and it stopped around 798, 799. If you guys remember, it just, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get over it. it you know, and, and after a while, the one thing is when a stock pauses, especially when it pauses near a whole number, right? Especially again, the whole number might not mean anything technically for that interval, but a lot of traders and a lot of investors, a lot of funds, they're going to be positioning on that whole number. So when you see, for example, a pregnant pause in a stock, it's only going to give you a couple of minutes to, to really figure out who's in control of that pivot, especially near that whole number area. And if you look at Tesla, right? If you look at Tesla here, and here is the, here's what I mean, right? So here is the 793, excuse me, 792, 793. And it gave that pop right to that 799. And what I started seeing was, I started seeing the bids just got thinner and they started getting wider. So I started selling stock. Uh, I took some cash flow on it. It was fine. There was nothing wrong with the trade. Again, let every trade uh, be a you know four, five, six point move into supply, whatever. But it, again, it really it, all it needed to do is get one more wave of buying. We would have saw a move going into the upper Bollinger Band. Again, it is what it is. We'll talk about the downside in a second. Uh, Roku again. Uh, we had you know I really really liked Roku uh, that twenty four fifty. Obviously you know it opened up at twenty eight. So here is the twenty four fifty that I was talking about from last night, right? Here's a 2450 that I liked last night. The problem is it gapped up almost 28. Uh, so I, you know, I said, listen, you know, if it starts building uh, above that 2780, 28, it can go. Obviously, uh, Roku got nowhere near, uh, nowhere near that 28 level. You can see the high of the day on Roku today was uh, 2670. So nothing on Roku. Uh, so here, first of all, congratulations for all you guys uh, who came in long shop. Right, this was yesterday's pivot here, 629 and 637. There were two areas to build. I know a lot of you guys held runners overnight. Uh, and this morning, again, I said, big move. Congrats to you guys who are long shop. I did not have anything overnight. Uh, but here was the pivot today that really took the stock, you know, next level stuff. Uh, shop uh, needs 672, 6, 673 build for more. And shop exploded. Really, really big move. Uh, they do report in a couple of days. Uh, here was shop right over here. Here's the whole, uh, excuse me, right here, 672, right? 672, here it is. 672, that was the opening range high. It took out 672. The first move was to 690, okay? So you had a $16, $17 candle in this thing, then came in and came all the way back to the 700 level. So big, big move uh, there as well. Uh, ZM, right? 145, 145.50 needs to build. Here was Zoom. Again, the love affair on and off, uh, off and on, off and on, on and off and on love affair with Zoom. Uh, so here is the 145, 145.50 area. Uh, went up to like 48 and change. Nice move on Zoom. Uh, Netflix, uh, two areas of importance. Uh, 429 level needs to build. So it got long, right? I got long on that 429.50 second entry. It traded up to 431 and you know, it took some sales, used break even on the balance. Uh, but it really, it came so close to really picking up a big move. Um, 431.75 was the highs. That, I actually still like this level going into tomorrow's session. But you could tell here, Netflix came very, very close on a very, very big move. And we were just sitting there and I go, come on, just push, just push and push. And it stalled out at 4, 431. Uh, so how to make some sales. But again, listen, again, let, let, again, let your worst trade uh, be a green one. Um, and again, this is how close it came from really busting out this channel. Uh, but again, maybe tomorrow. Again, we're still seeing, uh, we are still seeing 450 uh, calls pretty regularly, uh, near-term expiration. So we'll watch that again for tomorrow. Uh, NOW, monster move here. Uh, trades thinner. Okay, 361 needs to reclaim and build. Uh, here was uh, NOW. 
right? So here is NOW. Uh, here's the 361. This whole area here, 361, just exploded. Big, big move. Went to 373, so big move there. Uh, Apple was huge today. I mean, really, really big on Apple. Uh, 296.30 needs to build. Uh, here was Apple, right? Here was the 296.30, right? 296.30 on Apple. Big move. Went all the way up to in the, into the 300s, so big, big move on Apple as well. And again, that was the play. You know, 290s take on the way up, right? Take on the way up. Uh, you know, now, you know, I said decent flow to the upside. Now we're watching both sides, 800 to the upside, uh, 775 to the downside. So I caught a piece to the upside and we shorted, you know, we shorted Tesla to the downside. Um, I thought there was a shot. Um, I thought there was a shot I could get to 665. The reason why, uh, if you look at Tesla, the five day moving average was uh, 665, right? Excuse me, 765. It actually traded down. Uh, to 762. I like to pivot there uh, for tomorrow. Um, so good moves. I mean, definitely, definitely good moves to both sides. Uh, Netflix, again, here's the build, went to 431. Uh, again, bingo, right to 65. And then I said later in the day, there were two pivots on, on Tesla later in the day. I'll show you the second one that triggered 788, 789, never did. Uh, but there was actually a pivot back to the upside a little late in the day. Uh, and again, look, you know, here's 431 to 32 needs to reclaim more. Here is the pivot towards the end of the day. This is right. Uh, I didn't take the last pivot. I know some of you guys did. Uh, this is a decent cash flow move here. Uh, 781.50. Uh, 7850, 782 needs to build to wake up. And again, here is the last pivot of the day, right? So here is a 782 right over here, right? So 782 right here. You see that, guys? 781.50, 782, and it went right to the next supply zone of 786. If you did catch that last move, good job. Congratulations. So uh, going into uh, tomorrow's session, you know, I, I, I kind of a mixed bag. Um, I, I'm not in love with anything tomorrow. I do think there is going to be some value uh, on some names. Again, you gotta do you, you gotta do some research, guys. Go on the Nasdaq 100 on the Qs. Go through your charts. There are two. There are two very very specific charts that are sitting there right on support. And if they confirm support, they're gonna get hit. Again, it doesn't take a lot of effort, folks. Okay, you have to put in the time. You can go through the Nasdaq 100. Five minutes. Okay, you'll clearly see there's two names that are sticking out like sore thumbs, and that's what's going to be the value. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, Congratulations guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.